is in place. Now I want to share with you some ayat, and I'm going to be brief with some and detailed in some others. Originally when I thought about what am I going to talk to you guys about today, I was thinking about the 16th ayah of the surah, Surah Al-Hadid. But I figure I start from the beginning and I end at 16, inshaAllah. Hopefully we can finish that in time. In this surah, this is a Madani surah. By most accounts of the Sahaba, it was already four years in Medina when this surah came down. So hijrah happened four years ago. The Muslims have gone through a lot in these four years. And one of the problems they've experienced is that overall there's, been a, there's becoming a problem in motivation. The iman is not what it used to be. And Allah Azza wa Jal notices that there are some weak elements in the Muslim community. Even among the, you know, there are some who just became Muslim, they don't realize what they've gotten themselves into. There are some who are suffering from the disease of hypocrisy, nifaq. Among the ranks of the Sahaba, there's not somebody who has a label on their forehead, I'm the munafiq, I'm munafiq. <laughs> They're inside that community and it's a problem. But Allah addresses all of them together. What's beautiful about this surah, even though it is madani, even though it is madani, six ayat of this surah sound completely makki. First six ayat sound like they're Makkan Quran. سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Everything in the skies and the earth declares Allah's perfection. He's the ultimate authority. He's the one full of wisdom. The ayat, this, this ayah is introducing us to Allah. You would think the ayat that introduce humanity to Allah would happen in Makki Quran or Madani Quran. It happened in Makki Quran. Next ayah, لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَلَا يَعْرِفُ الْمُسْلِمْ بَعْد the Muslim doesn't know already. Lahu mulku samawati wal ard. He owns every. He owns the kingdom of the skies and the earth. Yuhi wa yumit. He gives life and he gives death. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And he's in complete control over everything. Muslims, fourth year after Hijrah, don't know this. They know this already or no? They know this already. This is not meeting a an, an academic prerequisite. These ayat are not there to fulfill an academic prerequisite. The Muslims are not going to learn something new in these ayat that they don't already know. They already know سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ They already know وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ They already know لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ They already know يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتِ They already know وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Two thirds of the Qur'an is Makki. Most of Makki Qur'an is about Iman and Allah. It describes Allah. It talks about Allah's ayat. It talks about Allah's attributes, Allah's names. And this is Madani Qur'an, and Allah is giving the Muslims a khutbah, and the khutbah begins like this, هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ He's the first and the last, the most obvious and the most hidden. وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ And he is knowledgeable of all things, he knows everything. And he always knows it, and he's always known it. And there's not a thing he doesn't know. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ He created the skies and the earth in, seven, in six days. ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ Then he rose upon or balanced العرش, the throne. يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ He knows what goes into the earth. وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا And what comes out of the earth. These are ayat that you would think Allah would give to Quraysh. They don't think about the creation of Allah, they don't think about the sky, they don't think about the earth. The Muslim already knows all of this, I told you. But Allah is making me and making you think about this again. So let's start over. Let's start over. And let's start over this time knowing that Allah, knowing that we are Muslim is still telling us this. سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Everything in the sky declares Allah's perfection. In parentheses, what is wrong with you? What happened to your tasbih? وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزِ He's the ultimate authority. How come my authority is not enough that you don't respect it? Al-Hakim It's full of wisdom. Why don't you trust that the things I'm telling you to do are good for you? Why don't you have any confidence in my wisdom? He says, لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The kingdom of the skies and the earth belongs to him. Why are you afraid of your enemy? Why are you afraid they have something, they have a weapon in their hand, they have money in their hand, they have power in their hand, that will somehow harm you. There is nothing in the skies and the earth that is outside of my kingdom. All of the battle between truth and falsehood is happening inside Allah's kingdom, and inside my kingdom. What do you have to fear someone else for? Why are you afraid of anyone else? لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Are you afraid of dying? He says, يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتِ He gives life, he gives death. 
Why are you worried about life and death? He will give and he will take because it's not yours to keep. I don't, you, we call it my life. I want to live my life. Who, who says it's yours? Where did you get mine from? People say my hand hurts. Is your hand? Well, how much you pay for it? Where did you get it from? Amazon? Where did you get your hand from? My life, my hand, my car, my house. <laughs> What's mine? He gives life. He gives death. He's given you this opportunity and he will take this opportunity. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And no, no, no. He wouldn't do that. No, he can do anything. He's in control of all things. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرِ He's the first and the last. And this has many interpretations, but at, at the personal level, the first priority, the first thought in your day should be what? Allah. The last thing you leave this world with, the last thing you do before you go to sleep, you think about your master. What did I do for you, my master, today? Me, this insignificant creature, what did I do today for you? I'm going to this bed, and I'm going to sleep, and I don't know if I'll wake up again. And I don't know if I have to stand in front of you after I... Before I wake up, I might have to stand in front of you. My first and my last thought. وَالظَّاهِرْ وَالْبَاطِنْ And he is so obvious. He is so obvious. Allah is in the unseen. How does He call him, Himself Allah? The ultimately obvious. The one who believes, they see, they see Allah in everything. They see Allah in the sunshine, Allah's work. They see Allah in His work. They see Allah in His creation. They see Allah in His planning. Well, He's Zahir. He's da- always. Sometimes really annoying things happen to you. Really annoying things. Like you get stuck in traffic on your way to Arabic class. 45 minutes late. You're upset. You're like, is that, a, is that part of Allah's plan? Yes. Because you need to learn sabr more than you need to learn Arabic some days. <laughs> so He's going to teach it to you. And if that means He has to make you lose your keys, He'll make you lose your keys. It's part of His plan. Because He's helping you control your temper. He's helping you learn to rely, learn to rely on Him. Sometimes they make you pass a test, sometimes they make you fail a test. So you learn to understand where success and failure comes from. And he's ultimately hidden. You, you think everything is happening around you. You don't see Allah. He's the ultimately hidden. Hidden. He's the universe's best kept secret. Allah Azza wa Jal. And at the same time, his work is the most obvious, makes him the most obvious. And he knows all things. There's nothing. Just because you don't see Allah doesn't mean he doesn't know what's going on. وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ He created the skies and the earth in six days and the display of His power. Then He rose upon Al-Arsh, the throne. The Arsh is described in Arabic literature for the throne of a king. When Allah describes that He's on a throne, that makes Him the king, that makes us His subjects. It's supposed to, the more you describe the greatness of Allah, the more it describes, it should insert in me humility. It should instill humility inside me. Al-Arsh. يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ And his, his Arsh is where? Up. So 